barrier to entry into this space is very high, especially because the kinds of customers who are buying these storage systems now are talking petabytes and even starting to talk about exabytes. So the barrier to entry from a development perspective is very high. The barrier to entry from a sales perspective is really high too. So as we hand it over to Brian, it's just something to think about that we're in a market and have a very unique position and we're well, we're well staffed and really understand the market to take advantage of today's opportunities. We clearly have a great product line. Of course, today we brought you here to tell you about some new things, but we wanted to make sure you had a good foundation this morning for how Spectra's gotten to where we are today. And better, what better person than Brian, our head of sales, who's developed um, all the outbound facing of how we actually go to market and get these products to our customers. With that, Brian? Do you have the clicker? Yeah. Can everyone hear me? Good. Okay, so the only part of my presentation that's under NDA are spelling errors and questions I can't answer. <laughs> Everything else is tweet away. So I'm Brian Granger. Thank you, Molly. I run Worldwide Sales, my Twitter handle, which is newly acquired this year, and uh, my, my email address. Um, <clears throat> I have to be honest, I'm not used to delivering a presentation to a group like this. Uh, you're, you're not exactly my most desired prospects <laughs> with a budget. So um, what I'd like to do is spend the next 15 or 20 minutes and just give you a real high level overview on how the sales organization within Spectra has helped um, and worked in conjunction with what Matt just talked about. Uh, what Nathan uh, alluded to at the beginning, and also Molly. So <clears throat> I enjoyed the dinner last night, and I, I got to meet a lot of folks that I hadn't met before, and obviously a lot of the, uh, the industry, vet, uh, industry veterans. And I came to realize that, that some folks um, had not had a good understanding of how Spectre Sales Organization uh, has worked. Nathan uh, mentioned this theme of molecule to a galaxy. Matt just talked uh, a little bit about the building blocks from a product development standpoint, and Molly referred to uh, the evolution of the tape market. So I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes about how the sales department has evolved over the years. <clears throat> so back in 1979, when Nathan started the company, and for many years after that, we, we did a traditional spoken hub. Most of our sales, most of our resources were based out of uh, Colorado, and then over time, uh, we expanded and, and had some touch points in different areas of the United States. Uh, we opened a UK office, a uh, small UK office out in uh, Oxford, and we put some salespeople in New York City, Atlanta, Charlotte, et cetera. <clears throat> However, as Molly has mentioned on our financials, we've had explosive growth in our financials. We've also been a uh, needed to back that up with, uh, with infrastructure. So in recent years, we basically have all of the major cities in the United States covered. Uh, uh, we have a complete Canadian operations out of Toronto and Montreal. In addition, we've recently relocated our UK headquarters to Bracknell, uh, which is just south of Reading over in the UK. And I've opened offices in Spain, Germany, uh, India, and Australia. And I'm currently uh, in the process of building out uh, Brazil, Korea, and channel, uh, China. Channel. <laughs> through the channel uh, in, in China. <clears throat> so uh, in our expansion areas, uh, obviously, are uh, the, the three areas that, that, that I see that we have a lot of growth within our uh, current business model is France, Mexico, Japan, and the Middle East. But the important point uh, or thing I'd like to point out is that we have the ability today to service and support any customer anywhere in the world, all four corners. So from a service standpoint, uh, we can reach and touch any of our current or future customers. So <clears throat> I've been at Spectrologic for about 10 and a half years. I'm kind of the young one in the group um, with behind Nathan and Molly and Hossein sitting, I see Hossein sitting back there 20 plus years uh, at the company. Um, but as we evolved with the product, that also allowed us to evolve in certain markets. Matt touched on a handful of key features within our libraries that are important to not just the masses, but also specific uh, customers within verticals. So about eight years ago, in parallel, we decided uh, uh, to have a tremendous amount of focus in the federal space, the uh, United States federal government, 
in addition to the media and entertainment group. And through the federal um, organization and all of the different products, we've been able to secure large customers like Bureau of Prisons that have libraries at all of the state, uh, state prisons, federal prisons, excuse me, around the country, uh, Bureau of Land Management, Center for Disease Control, NIH. We basically have a very good por portfolio over the years in the federal space. And in the media and entertainment, as some are, of, of you are aware that are here, Entertainment Tonight, um, uh, National Geographics, Medcom. We also have customers such as NASCAR uh, Media out of Charlotte, North Carolina, Discovery Channel and all of the locations around the world, and a plethora of other uh, media and entertainment customers around the world. These two focuses allowed us to take it to and, and bore out of there a couple of other areas that have been extremely successful for us in the, in the recent years. Through the federal group allowed us to, and gave us the ability to enter into the HPC space. Um, not just from a product standpoint, but also a uh, enriched customer um, standpoint. And out of the media and entertainment uh, allowed us to focus in on the surveillance market. Now surveillance is quite a bit different than media and entertainment. But in the HPC, we're in some of the largest um, installation supercomputers in the world. Nathan at the beginning mentioned NASA Ames. We're in Los Alamos, Sandia, Lawrence Berkeley, uh, Argonne National Labs, uh, some of the largest installations in the world. And on the surveillance side, um, while it's relatively new, uh, we still have some pretty impressive customers there. Harris County Tollway Authority, uh, Shanghai Banknote, what they do there is they're videotaping all of the folks that are cutting up the money uh, and making the money and making sure that uh, all that's secure. And then for those of you that came in on the plane, my guess is you probably came up E-470. Right? That's the highway to take you from the airport. Well, that's one of our customers, and we do have your picture <laughs> in your rental car or the, the taxi driver. I can't do anything about speeding tickets, believe me. I would if I could, but uh, my guess is they, uh, they know who you are. So with the successes in these four, core, uh, these four key groups, in addition to the general IT practice that we have, <coughs> the next two areas that Molly has referred to and in the future presentations is allowing us to really gain a strong foothold in the big data in the cloud storage market. Uh, and we've already made some, some pretty uh, significant strides in that area, but we still have a long way to go. We do have the products, we do have the service to back us up. Yes, so um, in federal, I have a completely autonomous sales group uh, that, that sells into the federal. Media and entertainment, that's head up by Hossein Zia Shakri in the back. Um, it's a hybrid. We have some dedicated folks and then uh, also overlay. HPC, we have some dedicated folks, but we also uh, use the rest of the sales force and along with surveillance. I just appointed a uh, VP of uh, worldwide surveillance just a few months ago. Um, if history is any indication of the future, my guess is some or all of these may turn into more autonomous sales organizations. Any other questions on that? <clears throat> so why all of the customers I just mentioned, why have, why have these customers selected Spectrologic? Um, Molly, uh, Matt took a phrase for Molly, I'm going to take one from Molly too. Uh, she likes to say that I mill about smartly around the world and just kind of go around the world. And one of the things uh, that I spend a lot of my time doing is sitting down with the customers after the sales complete, um, not just from a, a support standpoint, but it's really to understand why did they select us so that we can continue to improve uh, on that. And I can say that there are three areas that consistently come up in addition to a handful of other areas. And that's, they buy from us because of the relationships they have, the transparency as the, uh, of the organization, and also the reliability of the product. Not necessarily in that order, they move around, there's a couple of different reasons that are added in there, but these are the three most common uh, reasons why customers buy from us. So in the relationships, it's basically, it's a social or a business environment where there's a commitment of two or more people that can influence each other. And in transparency, in 
in uh, our definition at Spectra is a tremendous amount of openness, communication, and accountability between people and between organizations and including customers as an organization. And then reliability, uh, which obviously you can interpret any way you want, but at the end of the day, it's the opposite of random error. So you have, we have good, stable, reliable product. But first, I want to talk about I want to talk about the relationships and transparency for a minute. Talk about transparency. For instance, this picture would lead you to believe that we are all the same height. <laughs> and we are. But what I find interesting is I'm actually shorter. <laughs> it's a true picture. Now, well, there is something that, that's also I found interesting about this. I don't own a black suit, and I've never bought a red tie. In fact, I think this was a picture uh, that was taken when I was wearing my SEC uh, football shirt, and I think someone in the graphics department took, took some liberties. But um, in, in all sincerity, I mean, between Nathan, Matt, Molly, and myself, I mean, it, and we have a handful of other executives, uh, and especially with the addition of John Benson sitting back there, uh, I just want to talk about the synergies between our group. It is extremely rare that any of the customers that I mentioned earlier or the tens of thousands of libraries that are installed around the world, it's extremely rare that the customer has not had a personal introduction with one or more of us. Because we have to, to be the leader and the innovator in tape, we have to be in front of the customers. Uh, the day that I'm not, uh, that I don't have the ability to get in front of the customer and stay in front of the customer, it's probably the day that, um, you know, I realize that we're going off uh, on the wrong path in sales. So we, we don't talk a lot about titles. We talk about, you know, influencing each other and allowing customers to influence us. Also on the relationships and transparency is from a customer. All, most of the features Matt talked about, encryption, partitioning, you know, ASM, all of that, those came from some type of influence through the customer. Here's just a handful of some of the most recent things that we've done with some of the biggest names in the industry. NCSA, uh, Argonne, for instance, you know, was the one account that pushed us to 10,000 slots. Prior to 10,000, I believe our capability was six or somewhere in that neighborhood. And we were able to, um, to design and make that a successful implementation. Actually, it was the first 10,000 slot library that, that we sold. NCSA, just up the street from them, um, allowed us to integrate the TS-1140 technology through, uh, through IBM and also integrate rate into the Tfinity. Discovery Channel, uh, this, is, this was more of a learning curve for the sales department. Um, they don't talk megabytes and petabytes and terabytes. They talk video hours. So we integrated some pretty interesting software um, uh, features or the ways that we dis uh, describe the, the data within the library based off of video hours. Yes. Yes. Molly's going to talk about that later. This is... That's NDA right there. This is why I, I don't allow, I don't al I don't allow Mar Molly to uh, review my presentations <laughs> ahead of time. We'll consider rate a spelling error. Right. <laughs> yes, rate is a spelling error. Um, you know, so again, this is just a info. Uh, Los Alamos, they had some requirements for remote, remote power down. Uh, there's a uh, secure environment classified area that, that really pushed us with the blue scale vision cameras in, in, and that gives the ability to see inside the library. Um, not just because it's neat and cool, but also it really allows us to uh, provide a higher level of service uh, for our boxes. So <clears throat> now let's talk about the reliability of the product. Back last year, uh, we were fortunate enough to, uh, to participate in the Search Storage, um, Storage Magazine Awards of 2010. These awards are end user focused. Uh, the vendors don't respond. In fact, I wasn't even aware of it, that this survey was going on. And in 2010, 
This is actually mm -hmm. seven, but there were 14 awards. Inspector Logic ranked the highest in all 14. Um, I think that speaks to not just our reliability, but also that transparency. From initial product quality to product reliability, technical support, product features, and of course, most importantly, what keeps the economy turning, uh, would you buy this tape library again? And, uh, you know, uh, while you can see where we rank in terms of, you know, Quantum in Oracle, in Hewlett Packard, we've done a phenomenal job, and the other seven awards are more product related. The one I'm most proud of, of course, is this one right over here, which is Salesforce competency. I earned my paycheck last year. We'll see how, uh, how next year comes. So with that said, I want to thank everybody. Um, I'm truly humbled to be up here in, in front of you, you know, this group and to see where this company has come the last uh, 10 and a half years since I've been here. And I'm looking forward to the next 10 and a half years. So with that, questions?